YouTube welcome to my shop I'm Mike and I appreciate you stopping by if you've uh, seen any of my previous videos you you know that I always open my videos by opening my uh, hand plane collection now um, I've, I've been intrigued with hand planes since seventh grade wood shop and uh, I guess why I was so intrigued with them is that uh, that was in the mid 60s I hate to say but it was and uh, the instructor you know he, he said that 60 years ago which was around uh, the turn of the century that everything would no matter what it was whether it was a bookshelf a table a cabinet a counter uh, anything that was wood if it was flat it was done with one of these and uh, that just uh, you know, intrigued me, that every piece of wood that was flat was done with a hand plane. And I think that's why I was so, so intrigued with them. And I've been intrigued with them all my life, although when I got into high school, wood shop was replaced with uh, auto shop, and I, I was kind of, my hobby for most of my life was automobiles and, until I couldn't crawl under them. But uh, I thought I'd give you a, a quick showing of, of my planes and the types of planes. Now first of all Stanley didn't have types per se. That was made up by uh, somebody else and I really don't know who. Most of my information that I get uh, on the internet, I like uh, Patrick's Blood and Gore I believe it's called. I, th I think that's uh, a pretty good site but there's a lot of sites on types. So the types just mean that uh, Stanley bought Bailey back in uh, 1869. So anytime there was a change in the planes, they, they put a different type on. Now, Stanley, you know, Leonard Bailey was the guy that invented this type of hand plane here. That was his baby. The problem with this is it's metal, and at the time, craftsmen were using wood planes, like this little coffin plane here. You can see why it's called that. But, uh, you know, they weren't quick to change. So Stanley came in with a transitional where it was this plane right here that you screwed to, to the wood, and then eventually it came to all, all metal. Um, so that's, uh, that's where the type started. Type one in, uh, 1869 on up. Now the sweetheart planes from like, uh, night, uh, 1919, 1920, uh, those, uh, those planes were, um, called sweethearts. Bob, you, you interrupted me. I'm going to have to start over. Yep. I'm going to have to start over. Uh, I, the old Stanleys are what people want. And I believe really on w what I've priced and stuff, uh, the sweethearts from like 1919 to 1933, uh, the sweethearts are the, the, the big, big money or, or, uh, over the other ones. I mean, you could have a type you know, an 1899 uh, plane and the, the Sweetheart 1920 uh, may bring more money. But the price of the plane really depends on what kind of shape it's in, you know, what kind of shape it is in. So I just wanted to give you a, a, a look at, at my uh, my collection. Uh, the first thing I've got here is this old Stanley number 45. I made a case for it. I've got a video on that. But I made a case for it just because it's so unusual. Will I ever use these most of these planes? Probably not. I just have them because they, they've intrigued me all my life. So this old 45 with uh, the cutters this is all together. It can be used, but as I say, will I? I'm doubting it. It's just they're kind of look at because it's so unusual. 
And some of my other hand planes that I really don't use are these molding planes. Now I got these kind of when I bought a lot uh, of five or six, one of these would be in there. And I was planning on selling them, but obviously I haven't. So you got some rounds, or you've got some skewed rabbits. Uh, there's, there's the round. I don't have the hauler. Actually, this is the hauler. I don't have the round. And, uh, and then I also have this uh, newer Stanley. I bought this about four or five years ago. When I started doing my shop, I was working with melamine. And I didn't want to drag uh, my old planes over melamine. So I bought this, this from Lowe's. Now, obviously... It's way different. You adjust it by these two little knobs. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It works, but I like the old style better. Now, now for my uh, bench planes in my cabinet, I've got six uh, uh, block planes. I've got 11 bench planes, and I've got seven specialty planes like router planes and spoke shapes and things like that. So the first plane I've got is my my Stanley number eight. Now this is a type 11. Now uh, it's a type 11 because there is three patents on it. One is uh, April 25th, 02, August 19th, 02, and April 19th, uh, 1910. And then it also has the Stanley logo is in a V shape. So this is a Type 8. And uh, Type 8 was made between 1910 and 1918. My next plane, the seven, this is uh, probably the newest plane I have. Now, the, this was uh, made from 1933 to the war years, 1933 to the war years. Now, why it's newer than most is number one, the Stanley's in the lever cap, lever lock. The lever lock has a kidney shaped for the, the screw. It's got the tall handle. It's got the ring around the handle to keep it from chipping out. And uh, the Bailey's on the toe and uh, Made in USA's behind, behind the, t uh, the knob. So this is 1933 to 1941. A type 16. Six. This is the oldest plane I have, this six here. I got this when I was in seventh grade woodshop. Now, um, when I was a kid, it seemed that Stanleys were rare and expensive. And then all of a sudden eBay came along and they found out that every grandpa's got six or 10 in his basement. So that if you were collecting in the 80s, you were spending more money than you are in the 2016s. You know? This happened, this one I, I bought for, they wanted $20 for it in uh, in the middle 60s and uh, that's a lot of money I I washed cars for a buck each and mowed lawns for two bucks each so I had to, at 15 bucks I had to wash 15 cars you know if a kid gets 10 10 today for washing a car this would have been a hundred and fifty dollar plane so it was expensive and uh, it was cheaper than most because it was broke. You can see right there that it was broken and welded up. And uh, 
the lady knew I wanted it. I was only in seventh grade. She wanted 15 for it. And uh, I was deciding whether I should. Oh man, that's a lot of money to me. But I wanted a plane. I wanted a five, but hey, it's a six, one, one number off. But uh, finally she told me that this was her uncle's and he was supposed to be uh, on a Navy ship during the war and it got attacked and the thing fell down and broke. Now, you believe that story? Uh, I mean, when you're seventh grade, you, you believe all adults. <laughs> but uh, she told me, well, a lot of people looked at it and nobody wanted to buy it because it was broke. Uh, and uh, she said, well, I'll tell you what, kid. Um, you give me $10 and I'll give you this plane, my uncle's plane, and I will give you this Worth. This is the only uh, other bench plane that I have that's not Stanley, this Worth. So she g gave me both of these for $10 on the, on the, the, uh, <clears throat> the knowledge that if she did that, I would take care of it. So 50 years later, it's still looking pretty good, don't you think? I held my word to you, lady. And then uh, there's my worth. So these were my first two planes. Oh, I didn't, this, this, uh, I didn't tell you, this uh, six is, uh, it's a type 13. All right. Now it's got the Stanley in it, but it doesn't have the the kidney shaped screw holder on it. My my five. My five is also a type eleven. Now these are C's. The eight, the seven, the six, the five. Uh, I believe the four is uh, all, uh, yeah, is all corrugated. C bottoms, corrugated bottoms. So this is a Type 11. It's got the three patent dates on it. It's got the short knob. Um, it's got the uh, V Stanley on it. And uh, this iron has been only a couple more sharpenings, and this iron is worn out. So this plane has seen some some action. That's my five, corrugated C. As I said, also my four is uh, corrugated. Now this is also a type 11. It's got the Veed Stanley and uh, the uh, three patent dates. So that's the four. My three is a sweetheart. About 1925, I imagine. It's got the Stanley on the lever lock, but not the kidney. And uh, it's got the high knob, the, the taller knob but it doesn't have the ring around the knob. So that's why I deduct that this is uh, this is type 11, or excuse me, the 1933 Sweetheart. My last bench plane from eight to two. This is my two. And uh, this is also a Sweetheart. It doesn't have the Stanley and the lever lock, so it's early 20s, sweetheart. Now, there's a one, too. I don't have the one. I mean, if anybody out there has a one and you want to get rid of it, just send it on my way. I will accept it gladly. But if I were you, I'd put it on eBay for a thousand bucks or more. So, uh, the, you know, I really don't know. You can't... This is more like a block plane. As a matter of fact, here's a 220 block plane. 
220 220 block plane and here's a number two looks just like the the uh, block plane except it's got a tote so the two and the one are really block planes with totes and as I say this is another sweetheart early 1920s so that shows you the one the two through eight now I also have some specialty type planes. Here's the number 62. This is a low angled blade. Now the low angles are for um, you know stubborn wood or or in grain or things like that. So that's what the low angle. And then the mouth opens and closes also. That's a number 62. And it's a sweet, it's got a sweetheart blade in it. So I, I'm not sure if there's a type for the, those. I also have my worth, I showed you that. My five, here's a 10. This is a, rab, a carriage maker's rabbit plane. It's for really getting rid of wood quick. The sides are open so the, the shavings can come out. This is uh, also a, a, a sweetheart on this tin. Now, I don't, there's nothing about this, this uh, rabbit plane that matches like a bench plane. There's no frog adjustment or, or any of that. There's no uh, patents on it or anything, so. I know if it's got sweetheart between 1919 uh, uh, and uh, 1933. And I guess the last bench plane I have is the 40. Now, I'm not real sure on what year the 40 is. This is a scrub plane. See how big the mouth is? This is for really getting down and dirty. This is when you have to really work hard. And because of it, if you notice, you know, most planes are, uh, they're not protected. They're not japanned on the sides. But the 40, you sweat so much that they, they protected everything but the bottom. I mean, you'd be raining on this thing if you know. It just takes a nice groove out of out of uh, the stock. So that's a forty, and that's the end of my bench planes per se. Now moving on from my bench planes, I have whoops, a router plane, a seventy-one that I bought. And these are really, everybody should have one of these. They're, they're nice for cleaning things up. I got several blades with it, a, a, a narrow blade and a wider blade. Uh, I've got a foot with it, and then I've got the, the fence with it. Now, boy, eight or nine years ago, these things were kind of cheap. I think I bought this for 19 bucks, and it's, it's in good shape. I was looking on eBay the other day, and uh, they, they want, these are getting up to our hundred dollars they wanted for just this fence 50 bucks I was really surprised so if you can get a good deal on a 71 grab it it'll be worth it then I have uh, I've got uh, this scraper here this cabinet scraper it's a number 80 and uh, it's, it's like, you know, cabinets, regular scrapers, I guess. But you got these big handles to hang on to. And when you have bad hands, this works great. It'll scrape glue off or, uh, I like this number 80. And then, uh, here's a number 51 spoke shave. Spoke shaves are really nice to have too. They really are. They can do some, some good stuff. 
and uh, then it's now it, it, all it is is the um, block planes and I've got several I've got six block planes and then I also have I don't really know what these are these are from AMT I've never researched them they're very little small spoke shaves uh, I don't know if these were a presentation if, or or what they were or if, I know that some uh, uh, instrument violin makers and things like that they they have small things like that so maybe this is an instrument makers uh, uh, spoke shave but I don't know it came with some other stuff that I bought and I just kept it for keepsake I guess Alrighty, YouTube, let's move on to the my block planes. Now this one right here is my favorite. It's a 103. This is 1 and 3 eighths inches wide, so it's after 1914. But it's got the same lever you push up and lower for, for uh, depth. Uh, it's small. It fits in my apron real nice. Uh, this plane I probably use more than any plane going. So uh, this is the 103. Now the 203 has a wooden knob, unlike the 103, uh, and it's got a, a knob for depth, and it's uh, held in by the palm or the lever lock or whatever you want to call it, uh, but. This is a little 203. I don't use it much, but uh, it's a nice little plane and it's pretty old, so that's why it's in my uh, collection. Okay, the next, uh, next plane is a 60 and a half. Now this is one of Stanley's most popular planes. Uh, it's uh, got the depth knob here in and out now like all most block planes if you want the lateral you've got to tap on the side to get the lateral going but this is low angle for doing end grain in uh, difficult woods it's also got a an adjustable mouth so you can bring it way tight or open it up for bigger cuts and uh, this is uh, this is my 60 and a half and uh, it's a nice little plane. All right, my next uh, plane is the number 75 Bullnose. This is good for cleaning up close in or close edges or things like that. It's very small. Uh, it was made between 1879 and 1973. It's four inches long. And uh, as I say, it's uh, for getting up close, uh, close work. That's a bullnose 75. And one of the Stanley's workhorses is the 220. Same tap for lateral, but you've got the old uh, depth adjustment lever lock on the top. The mouth does not uh, move. This is just a get down and dirty little hand playing this 220. It was the 220 was made uh, from uh, 1898 to 1973, and this is close to the turn of the century. Okay. All right. Uh, this little plane here is the 110. Now this is quite old. I've got it in my shop. It doesn't have a, a screw that holds the lever cap on. It's got the bar across and that bar has a screw head in it. So it, it's screwed into the thing. It's tapped and screwed. It's got uh, a little, uh, the old type uh, depth or tightener on it. 
lever tightener so you you loosen it up and tighten it up this way this is very old as I say it's it's uh, the blade has got Stanley rule and lever on it it shows pitting but uh, you know anything uh, that's made over 120 years ago should be uh, you know kept around just for keeping around sake if you know what I mean that's the Stanley 110 Stanley 110 okay the next plane is the old number 92 cabinet makers rabbit plane uh, it's uh, five and a half inches long it's three quarters inches wide the blade fits up the whole span because it is a rabbit plane after all and uh, after 1964 it was an inch wide so this is three quarters of an inch wide and uh, it was made from 1902 to 1969 and uh, this just came with a bunch of planes that I bought and I thought it was unique so I thought I'd keep it around and I, I I've used it a time or two and it's come in handy when you need it. That's a 92 uh, uh, rabbit plane, cabinet maker's rabbit plane. Okay, this last plane, this number nine and a half, is probably one of Stanley's better planes. Now this is a little newer because uh, it's painted in burgundy, but uh, it's got everything this little block plane. It's got a, a movable mouth to widen and narrow it. It's a nice weight, heavy weight. It's got a, a adjustable uh, depth in the back and it's got a lateral movement. You don't have to tap it with a hammer and that makes it a lot nicer. So uh, this little nine and a half uh, I use quite a bit. It's really nice uh, to use and uh, if you, you have a block plane, this and the 60 and a half are the, the, the ones that I recommend over, over any of the others because this will do it all. And that shows you what I've got as far as my block planes. My bench planes, my block planes, and my other planes. Alrighty, you two by... I guess that's about it but before before I go I'd like to give you some if you're looking at planes kind of what to look for now any plane back in the 18th century those are hard to find so I'm going to just start uh, at the, the type 10 now the type 10 goes from 07 to 09 now the type 10 was the first to have the adjustable frog where the, the screw uh, is in front of the tote and you can screw it in or bring it out, uh, the frog. So that was the first time that that came in. If you don't have that, it's before uh, 1907. And then uh, the blade had Stanley rule and level on it. So that's type 10. The 11, as I some of mine are, they're 10 through 18. Uh, they've got three patents on them. They've got an O2 patent, an o, another O2 patent, and a, a, a 10, a 1910 patent. That's basically it other than that it's got the V on the uh, logo, the Stanley logo on the iron is, is V-shaped, okay? The Type 12, that goes from uh, uh, 1919 to 1924. Uh, on that style is the first time they put the high knob on it and it was also the first time they did put the SW with a heart around it the sweetheart logo so uh, if it doesn't have that logo it's before 1919 okay or after 1933 uh, type 13 you, you look at it's a 1925 to uh, 1928 um, the patent on the uh, 1910 is the only one that's on there, so that st takes it up. And then uh, the Stanley has become on the lever lock, 
you know, they put Stanley on it. Before, before 1925, Stanley wasn't on that lever lock. So uh, then type 14 is 29 to 30. Uh, the Made in the USA is now on the toe, not Bailey. Uh, it's the USA is on the toe. And they also put a ring around the knob uh, to help protect it from chipping out the front knob. So that's type 14. Uh, type 15, uh, the US, uh, Made in the USA is now behind the frog. Uh, it's not up front or in the back, it's right behind the frog in front of the tote. And there's no patents on uh, the T-15s at all. All the patents have been removed, okay? And then also Bailey has been put behind the knob. USA behind the frog, Bailey behind the knob. That's T-15 and uh, uh, then uh, the T-16 from 33 to 41, the war years, and that's the last I go. After the war, you know, everything was different. And during the war, they did whatever they could, used whatever they could. So the, the Type 16, the last one I'm going to cover, from 1933 to 1941, that's when the Sweetheart label on the iron has been removed and taken off. The kidney uh, on the lever lock, where the you, the screws uh, tighten down, that is now a kidney shaped, not not a key lock shape, but a kidney shape. That was the first time that appeared, and um, they also around that time they put kind of a, a rim, a lip, you know, around the front and around the back of the plane, I guess for more strength or something. But that was basically it from uh, the Type 10 to the Type uh, 16, and those are the probably the ones that you'd be interested in if you wanted to, to uh, uh, collect old Stanleys. So I guess that wraps this up, you two. That's a look at my uh, hand plane collection. I'm, I'm glad to have it, I, I like it, and uh, uh, I don't think I'm going to go too much farther with it. <laughs> I think with the planes I have, the hand planes I have now, or I'm going to stick with. So until next time, YouTube, I really appreciate it. You take care of yourselves and be well. See you next time.